interesting. And hello. Hi. I have to get my earphones and uh, I have to finish. Hello? Yeah, you said hello before and then you disappeared. I closed the box. Oh. I have no idea how now to run, run these things. Are you running it with her thing? Are you on, or did you oh, get printed on air? Huh? I got it. Ah, what did they uh, send you? Uh, a link. Well, I say so, ah, on. because I'd love it, but I, I don't know how to get in. Do you have a light? On <laughs> me. You got a light? I, yeah, I have I've had the light on me the whole time. Okay, let's see. I so I, ugh, I'm just trying to figure this out. Post broadcast video publicly. Hmm. It's still yeah, that's, limited. That's, that's me without the light. Yeah. That's me with the light. Okay. It's not much better. Here's me without the light. Oh. Here's me with the light. Mm-hmm. And uh, so it's limited. Post broadcast video publicly. Post is an interesting term because actually... Because you're not thinking post. You want to broadcast. I just, right. It should just say broadcast. i got to write down notes. Post. When did you get this? Today? Yeah. <laughs> How did they notify you? Email? Yep. Post broadcast video publicly. Now, did you ask or did someone ask on your behalf? I asked. Hey, CC. Yay, I can see everybody again. Excellent. That was so annoying yesterday. I can believe it. I've had that happen in the past. That was weird. What are you okay. eating, Jeff? <laughs> it, it's chicken tikka masala. Nice. Trader Joe's, though. Still have never been to Trader Joe's. One of these days I'll get there. Well, well you're I... out where you could go to Wegmans, which is much better, and then you'd never have to go to Trader Joe's. Well, Wegmans isn't that close. Well, you're closer. It's closer than where I am. True. And I did see a really cool video from a shopping uh, cart nice. around Wegmans. <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna make this live so we can start sharing it. Okay? Yeah. Whatever. Sure. I have no idea. Posting in three, two, one. So you've got the on-air functionality Broadcast today. So he's video. doing this himself. Okay. So that's live. So actually, we should see it now. Yep. Hey, everybody who's watching nothing. <laughs> 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 right? South by Southwest, the bad. How could South by Southwest be improved? Hangout ah, public. That's okay. Good. So there it is. Let's share that. It, uh, Oh, they didn't take the title. Hmm. Maybe I should just move back so I have a better light. Oh, whoops. Yeah, fuck. Whoops. Oh. <laughs> oh, <delete. laughs> Ban. Mute. Now live on G plus on yourself. Okay, good. So tweet that out. Hey. 
Jeffrey Powers. Yeah. What's up? And good. We're good. So that... Is that better? <laughs> Bless you. you <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> Hangout crashes G Plus on Melissa Pierce's phone. Hmm. Well, don't use your phone. It's probably an Android. <laughs> yeah, they haven't quite got the mobile platform right yet. They're really trying, but not even close. Oh, I tried it, but then I realized I needed to be on Wi-Fi. Yeah. I didn't know. I tried it, then I realized, why am I that vain? Wait, what? Oh. I was going to do it from the tub, but... Uh... <laughs> Thank you for not. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, you don't want to drop the iPhone into the tub. Yeah, that's why we don't want to. Yeah, drop that's the, the tub. exact reason you don't want me broadcasting from the tub. Okay. Okay. What? I'd are we, say are, we're. Are we live? Are people watching? What's yeah, pe people saying? are watching, but I'm getting ready to start. You ready? Okay. I don't know if my light's right. <laughs> Jeff Cutler, always entertaining. Okay, here we go. That's pretty good, I guess. Here we go. Stand by. Quiet on the set. Hey, everybody. It's Steve Garfield from stevegarfield.com, and today we're live with South by Southwest 2012, The Bad, otherwise known as How Could South by Southwest Be Improved? So I've gathered a group of friends with me, and we're going to go down the line and talk to each one of them and, and talk about some of the, I guess, the bad things about South By and how we think they should be improved. And we're going to start with my good friend, C.C. Chapman. Hey, everybody. It's C.C. Chapman. And today oh, I can nice see everybody. Thing. It's nice so much job. better seeing everybody. Yesterday was weird. I got my list of bad things on my little post-it note. So, and, and I, know, I know this doesn't go without, doesn't need to be said, but I think all of us here are big fans of South By and what South By Southwest is all about. We just would love to see it be even better, right? I think that's, what, that's the way, at least the way yeah. I think about it. Exactly. Like, what I like to say is when I do criticism, I like to say two good things and then the bad things. So yesterday we did a whole show all about everything we loved about South By. Right. So... And all this is constructive criticism because haters suck and we ain't be haters, right? Exactly. So uh, I, wrote, I, I kept it short. I mean, three things that I think could be definitely improved about South By. Um, open the expo floor on the weekend. The fact that the expo, the trade show, didn't open until Monday at noon seemed very, very strange to me. Um, while the trade show isn't a huge part of uh, for me personally, I mean, if a company's going to pay the money to be there for the trade show for inter interactive – and you don't start till Monday. A lot of people leave on Monday or Tuesday, so it seems silly not to do it on the weekend. That just seems like a, a missed opportunity for money and exposure for South By, so I don't get that. Um, the other one, for the love of God, please videotape and share publicly all keynotes. Live stream would be even better, but I'm not going to touch that because I know somebody else is going to probably mention that. But I want, I, I didn't get to see a couple of the keynotes, and I would really like to see them after the fact. I know that you can't tape every panel. That's a logistical nightmare with the sheer volume. But at a minimum, at a very minimum, please capture the keynotes. Um, I re and, that, and that goes for across the board, film, interactive, and music. I would love to see them all out there officially on a South By channel. South By started using video to promote South By. Let's see them sharing it after the fact. The fact that there isn't South By Southwest talks similar to TED Talks after the fact boggles my mind. It makes no sense that that doesn't exist. And the final one, while it doesn't affect me because I always come in on Thursday on purpose, is the badge for weight lines for a badge. That's just insane. Um, there's a million, and I know I understand it's a logistical craziness, but the best idea I heard was from somebody who, I, I don't know if they want to remain anonymous or not, so I'll leave them anonymous. They said, you know what, I'd pay 50 bucks extra to have my badge FedEx to me after seeing the line. So South by could make money off of the <laughs> improving the badge. I mean, there's other solutions, but I thought that was one that I said, you know what, how could you argue? Because I mean, I, And they print them on demand, so it just seems like that whole thing, since they've been doing South by for X number of years now, you'd think they would have figured out some way to make that better. But the fact that every year it takes hours upon hours to get the badge is silly. So there's my three bad things about South by that I'd love to see get improved. 
Okay, Jeff Cutler with the uh, <laughs> nice light effect. Hopefully that works. Actually, that um, looks better. Well, I'm holding it up to the side, but if I get a hand cramp, then what happens? And I go into the dark and fall off the screen and nobody... You're holding a light one. right now? Oh, my God. <laughs> This is, when I walk around the streets of Boston, that's what I do. I just carry a light. I usually carry a camera in the other hand, just so people are like, who's he? Someone's filming him. Um, yeah, mug me, mug me. <laughs> yeah, take my stuff. <laughs> okay, I will keep it to three things because CC set the precedent. So oh, my but thing, I'm doing five things. <laughs> I'll say, it's your show, Steve. You can do whatever you want. Yeah, you can do whatever you want. Okay. Um, my three things, first off, is registration. And my big thing with registration is, why do you open up to everyone in the world? Why not limit badges so that you know exactly how many people are coming in? And this will reflect on a couple other things, but you can really plan for the resources of the city of Austin, of the convention center, of every session. So limit the number of badges. What I heard just today is that they've changed the dates so that now the dates of none of the shows overlap. They're all end to end for next year. What do you mean? I don't know. I don't know mean? if this is true or not. I only heard it through one tweet, and I haven't had time to research it. Meaning, so, if interactive starts on the eighth and ends on the twelfth, film wouldn't start till the thirteenth and end on the seventeenth, and then music wouldn't start till the eighteenth and end on the twenty-something. Which, in again, this is all speculation, so I don't know where it ends, but if I'm running an organization, great. I don't have overlapping crowds. I make more money. The hotels make more money because they can spread it out over the whole month, but as an attendee, I think that's the stupid, stupidest move ever because I want to go and get a piece of some of the other stuff and also think about buying a badge to overlap and go see some of the other things, but that's neither here nor there. It's not something that's bad yet. That could be on next year's show. The second thing is the sessions. If you're going to require people to apply for sessions and get your stuff in in June or July, then you shouldn't lock everything down and make your decisions in August or September when the show is six months away or seven months away. If you're, not going, to, if you're going to decide on what the topics are that far away, then the show has lost its relevance. Why not use the power of what you have for resources and make December the deadline for your decision or for submissions on the decision. I know it's a lot more work, but you guys at South by are wasting a ton of resources anyway. And this then goes to the whole resource wasting thing. I have never seen more people in red volunteer shirts in my life. And they're just everywhere. It's almost like the number of people with the red volunteer shirts are equal to the number of people attending the event. Cut the fat and put people at doorways, and that's it. You don't need volunteers if you lock off the convention center, lock off every venue, so that you just check tickets when they come in. The, the ticket thing to follow up on CCs, you can mail these tickets out two weeks ahead of time. And as long as they have the barcode or whatever, that's fine. And if you have a problem with the ticket, get in line when you get there, and then yeah. deal with your line. That's a good point. It's yeah. mismanaged to a fairly well, <laughs> as uh, older relatives of mine might say. Yeah, Jeff, I just looked up the dates, and um, Interactive is March 8th through 12th. Okay. And Film is the 8th through the 16th. Okay. And so music, music is 12 through 17. Okay, so there's still overlap. Just the, like, yeah, same as, it's the same yeah, overlap as this, like year. this year. Yeah. Al although, music was right at the tail end. We were 8th to, or 9th to 13th this year. But music was, like, right after that. Right. Music so, is next year, yeah. I also heard that there was going to be talk about bringing comedy and making its own mini track for that. I don't know if that's going to be true or not, but uh, that was some of the scuttlebutt I heard uh, around uh, Austin. Mm -hmm. Steve, I what see, was the well, music track dates again? Music is yeah. March 12th through 17th. Okay. And there's one, there's an, two more that I didn't mention. Echo is, what Eco. is it? Eco. Eco. Oh, yes. well, that's happening later this year? That happened. It happened, it already, okay. ha I mean, it happened once already. This and is. Echo and EDU. 
there's one here listed October 3rd through 5th of 2012. Hmm. And then you just said WEDU um, March 4th through 7th of 2013, so just prior. Yeah, because yeah. that's what they did this year, too. It was right, right did, beforehand. Did, um, yeah, unconferences. Oh, and that's stuff. why people were in town early. Yeah. Okay. I yeah. didn't know that happened. Okay, Jeff? Oh, yeah, color? the last thing was hotels. I am just a little annoyed only because I got away with it last year slash this year. <laughs> But I don't like the fact that South By puts a proprietary lock on all the hotels until they release registration. So it's not it's not capitalism to the degree of like demand, supply and demand. They lock down every hotel within a certain area, although although the Hyatt's available now. And I think it's collusion to the point where they can dictate the prices at these places put out for everyone who's attending. Whereas a hotel, if you had points and wanted to use those for your hotel, or you were planning any year ahead at any hotel anywhere else in the world, you would get a good rate. Right. I know I'm going next year. I'm ready to plunk down the money right now. So why can't a certain hotel take my money now and lock that room down? Other than the fact that they know they're going to get occupancy from the guarantee that South by brings. I don't know what they have, dirty pictures on every hotel or what they have to blackmail all these places, but I don't think it's that fair. So that's my three. You're making faces, CC, all over oh, the place. I, I dis I, yeah, well, I disagreed with pretty much everything you said. Sorry. From, the beginning, <laughs> right. from beginning to end. <laughs> that's why it's, it's great well, on the Internet. CC, you had to agree with them on the, the uh, pre-printing and shipping out a badge. Yeah, oh, yeah, that one I did agree with. Sorry, that one I did, yes. But what? So what's your? What don't you disagree with? Well, the, well, what was the first point you brought up? Because it really now I'm trying to remember because I was the shaking sessions. my head. It was the sessions and deciding. Oh yeah, the either. December thing. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I just saying they're irrelevant. I think is really naive to say because I mean there was topics on everything relevant. I don't. I mean, I think there, that's there really. Was one, there was one session on Google Plus. There was one session on Pinterest because the CEO. You need showed up. a whole session. No offense, but do you need a session on those? I mean, I know we talked about all that technology in our session. Yeah, I, you can cross over into that stuff, but when they're presented, it's I, not topics that people wanted to talk about. I think everyone has to morph their presentation. Having been a liaison to the panelists through this whole process, um, you have to morph your presentation along the way so that it picks up on current stuff. So everyone does that. But as an attendee, I would rather see the most current topics listed in the guide all the way up to the end instead of stuff on Foursquare and then having people have to change their whole session based on Foursquare, based on other technology that's not even out yet. Well, if, like they had just, a, if they had a session scheduled on Posturus, that would be, they wouldn't need one anymore. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, they could have like a PodCamp kind of thing where people you know, show up and design sessions then. That, that might be too far overboard. But well, they could use yeah, some, of the, some of the extra resources they have into evaluating stuff. And I don't, I'm also not a fan of the popularity contest manner of the sessions. Yeah. Don't, forget, don't, don't forget, that's just a, a piece of it. Oh, I know. They say it's a third of it. But if yeah, I look and at having, that, and having, and, and just, I mean, I took part in the second third this year where, you know, I'm not a big fan of the pimping either. I hate it. I hate that yeah. vote for my panel crap. I hate it. But I also took part in the part afterwards, the second third, which was, you know, voting and judging panels this year. I I, I got called out because I sl I slammed the pitch fest and South by said, all right, Cece, would you help with the next part phase then? And I did, and I didn't realize. I mean, it took me hours upon hours to judge panels. It takes I a would, lot. So I'd love to talk about that another time, just to yeah. find out what that included. One well, thing I, I would like to know, I would actually like to know, CC, how many panels did you have to look at? You had to judge a minimum. When you agreed, you had to agree to judge a minimum of 150 panels. Minimum. Wow. And, and how many are And it's, it's literally, total? it's look at the pitch. You know, you thought, we've all seen the pitch, right? You know, because yeah. everybody, you look at it, and then there was, I'm trying to remember, there was like five or six things you had to grade it on, a, like from one to five. And then you had to rate the speakers presented. Um, like one to five, there was stars, and then you had to give like an overall, and then feedback. You know, why why are you voting for this the way you are voting for? It? And you had to put text in, so it wasn't like you could just fly through this stuff. And yeah. 
I, there's a lot of crap. I remember, I, and I was just judging in the, the content and journalism arena, and there was a lot of crap, and there was a lot of really good stuff, and it was it was really mixed, but it took, you know, minimum of 150 was the commitment to do, and so it's a lot. Yeah. I, I noticed there was a lot of overlap, too, in a lot of the panels I was a liaison for. The... The other thing I was concerned about is even though they tell us as liaisons to make clear in every communication to the panelists not to be commercial, a full 30 to 40 percent of the panels I went to this year were overly commercial. It was all yeah. just an ad for a product. Yeah. And if they can't get rid of that, if they can... But that's every, con that's every conference we've ever been to. Everybody pitches. There, there's always people pitching from the stage. That, and, they, we all, yeah. and everybody hates it, but... I wish every conference could cut that out. Well, I mean, maybe they should disallow even saying where you're from. Wow. Come on, be a realist. <laughs> I know. <laughs> All right, let's uh, move along to Jeffrey Powers. What What's up with your... I don't, know. I don't know. I like that idea. Let's put leather masks on all the panelists. So hey, we don't wow. That's a different conference. <laughs> <laughs> Well, my first my first thought was uh, we need segues for everybody there at South by Southwest. That would be awesome. But no, I, but seriously, the uh, the big thing, uh, the Expo Hall. Now, uh, the Expo Hall and and most conferences do this. They have a day or two of of sessions, and then they open up the Expo Hall after that. And I, I think that's just a stupid practice, nonetheless. I think I think what they what somebody should do, some sponsored uh, place not in the conference hall, but have a mini expo hall the, the day or two before and have all those those people exhibit there, and then they can move to the main expo hall. It was a small expo hall, um, so my guess is the prices of those booths were pretty outlandish. And, uh, yeah, it, it needs to open at least on Sunday, Sunday, uh, Sunday Monday, because I was there. On, technically, the main reason why I was there was that expo hall. And if I had more of a chance to go through it and interview uh, all the people, then I would have done that. There's, there's also no price, no individual price for just the expo hall only. Oh. You, you've got to, oh. you've got to pay at least five hundred dollars just to get in the place. I'd rather pay fifty dollars and get it in the expo hall. Oh, they should have that for sure. Yeah. Definitely. Every conference has that. They usually give the expo free. Yeah. Uh, no, you needed a badge to get in. I, I, I had a couple people tell me that. So. Huh. But uh, if if they threw if it was fifty dollars just to get in the expo hall, I would have taken that option hands down. So that that's my uh, that's my improvement for the expo hall because I was there to get content for my website, uh, interview people and interview uh, interview booths. I've got about ten fifteen interviews, so it it did work out. So the other thing that I noticed was uh, a lot of people got messed up because of that time change. And I think Eventbrite even got messed up because there were a lot of sessions on Sunday I went to that were an hour later than what they said, what they were scheduled. In fact, I saw this one, and I, I went from one session to another because of this, and it was at a place called Elysium, I think it was. It was over on uh, 7th Street. It was this grunge bar where they have heavy metal bands, and they were doing a talk on how Twitter switched from MySQL to Cassandra. And they had this totally geeked out talk on, on, on SQL databases, which was probably the geekiest uh, uh, <laughs> session that I saw at South by Southwest. And I couldn't attend it because they all messed up on the times, and I had another event scheduled after that. So, um, I, And I think this is more event bright than anything because they just, they just put it in uh, not figuring for the time change. And then everybody, uh, every, uh, a lot of the session, or a lot of the, Events were an hour off. Um, I had one more. I said badge in all events, but I can't remember exactly what I meant by that. Um, I think that was because of the expo hall. On were you thinking expo and parties as a badge? Oh, yeah. Yes, the after parties. Um, yeah, I, I would have really, because I didn't have the badge the first uh, day or two, I, I, I couldn't get into the Google... Googleplex, so I could talk to Google and 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 see what was going on over there. It wasn't a big deal, but uh, it would it would have been nice. Especially there were some events that said that you didn't need a badge, and then you walked up to the door and they said, "No, you need a badge," and uh, that was a little bit disappointing. 
But for me, who got my badge really last minute, it was, it, it, I guess it was what it was. But uh, I, I don't think that that should be a requirement to get into certain parties. And I think, uh, last thing, and I, th I don't know if you're going to talk about this, Steve, because I didn't see this, uh, I didn't see this firsthand. I know you did. And that was those long lines at, the, at some of those sessions. And how do they, how do they curb those long lines to get into something like a, um, like a, a Bertunde or you know just the, the was it the Joss Stone or or something like that um, that you waited in a super long line you weren't sure if you were going to get in or not yeah um, if if there was a way to prerequisite I'm going to this session I get these tickets now and go from there and then they can have a line after that so if people don't show up mm. by a certain time then then everybody else gets to go in yeah, that would point. be a little bit better. Okay, so let me start here with my uh, things, and I have put these on a uh, uh, you storified. It? Yeah. Okay, you guys can see that now. Yeah, it's fancy. I like it. Yeah. Okay. So I use storify, and actually storify won storify won an award on one of the the awards things they had for best social. And I love Storify because it makes it so easy to put content together. And I was realizing the really cool thing about this is your content sits on Storify, which is at storify.com. And I also can embed it on my blog. So I get hits by both my blog and my main site. So the first thing that Steve, I want to talk you, about... You sound, Steve, you sound yeah. just went oh. sideways. Oh, okay. How about now? You're it's still a little crackly. Static, yeah. That ever static? since you switch, ever since you switched ever, to this, this screen yeah. Share, ever since you gave us a screen, out. you've been wonky. Oh, all right. I'll come back. How am I now? You've got some. In, it's something's interfering. It sounds like. How about now? It's still. It's there when Are you your talk. Phone anywhere? Uh, there is well, a most phone of it here, but that isn't having anything to do with it. Yeah. Oh, it could. Bluetooth it's interferes it's, all the time. Yeah. You, you got a little bit of st static. Like it's a fine. Static clean sound. All right. Check one two. Yeah, it's no? there, but it's yeah, there, but you it's can still hear there, you. but it's not that annoying. Yeah. Continue on. All right. So, um, oh well, I had a really nice picture. Should I try that again? Yeah, go for it. It sounds the same. Here, let's do this yeah. because it you got to see this. Okay. Do you see that? Yep. So Joss Whedon came and he had the biggest crowd. It was huge. So I sat way in the back and he looks like the tip of a pencil eraser and you couldn't even see his head, <laughs> really. But over on the right, you can see the huge South by Southwest projected. Would it be nice if they projected his image up on the big screen? I don't know why on a huge room like this, they don't project the image of the speakers in, in, when you get such a large crowd. So there's that. Then there's this guy. You can see this guy with the camera on his head? Guys? No. No. What? Oh, oh yes, now. Yep. Yeah, okay. So he was live streaming from inside the sessions. And um, you're not supposed to live stream from inside sessions. And I saw Hugh walking by and I said, ah, uh, Hugh, what is this guy doing live streaming? Uh, he was too busy to deal with it. but. If he can live stream, it would have been nice if I could have live stream. Any any number of us could have live stream sessions. So they really need to enforce people live streaming or let people live stream. And the third thing is this is Bar the Baratunde keynote. It was huge. He was great. Halfway through the keynote, I saw people tweeting out that it was being streamed live. Well, it would have been nice if they had told us beforehand it was being streamed live and the person who introduced them could have said, hey everybody, here's the URL, tell all your friends this thing's being streamed live. So I think they need to do a much better job of promoting when things are being streamed live. And communicating. Yeah. Okay. Leaving the session in the big ballroom, I could not open these middle these middle doors. And then I, I went through, they have one door to enter and one door to exit and there's 3,000 people trying to exit. I'm wondering why aren't all the door exit doors open? 
So this woman right here tried to jam the door closed as I came through the exit door and jam my backpack in the door. I'm like, what are you doing? She's like, well, you can't go out this door. And well, at least if they don't want people to go out the doors, could they put the woman on the other side of the door saying don't come through these doors versus on the other side? <laughs> Just made no yeah, sense. Yeah, if they jammed it like that, that's actually a fire hazard. Yeah, that wasn't right. And then the yeah. registration, you all, everybody mentioned it Thursday. This was the, the photo for, for no lines, and it was great. Um, and I, my suggestion was to just mail registration passes to us earlier. We yeah. register months and months in advance. I'm not sure why they can't just send them in the mail. That would probably fix the problem, I think. Yeah. I mean, $600 for a pass when you first buy it. I'll pay $10 more for a postage. Just send it. Yeah. Um, what about Wi-Fi? I was going to mention that, but you were talking about live streaming, and I can't see that they could live stream if that's going to take up even more bandwidth in the the halls. But they are live streaming. The thing, the They're thing was, is they it. they were live streaming. They just weren't telling anybody. I think that was so. They've got some hookup to do it. Yeah. yeah, they were live streaming, and they had a great broadcast. Um, and it was on the blog on this certain post that you had to find which said each day what they were live streaming, but they weren't putting it out on the Twitter feed okay. saying, hey, we're live streaming in a minute, we're live streaming now, you know, everything that we would do. You know one, you know one other thing that's kind of interesting that I noticed after the fact is, you know the, that system Lanyard that was listing all the... All the yeah. All the, so I, I saw a tweet yesterday, uh, two couple days ago that said, the, basically it was my panel, the recording's now up. And I went, what? And I clicked through, and it's obvious that it's a board recording. I mean, you can tell it's coming right off the mics because it's crystal clear. And I went out to their Twitter account, and it looks like they recorded audio of every session. Like, there's a whole list. And I was like, wait, A, I wish, you know, I wish that was publicized more. B, I wish I knew that because, like, one of our guys went off mic for a while, and if I'd known we were being recorded, I would have definitely told him to stay on mic. So it looks like there's more recordings out. I forgot to mention that yesterday on the good, because I thought it was kind of cool that they recorded the audio, but I didn't know about it. It doesn't seem many people know about it. So I Well, I did hear it. that a lot of people in the sessions I went to made note when they were doing the presentations or pre uh, that, doing the introductions saying that this is being podcast as well. So oh. you can look for the podcast later. Um, oh, and I heard that everywhere, but... I didn't think of it because I'm like, well, I'm already here. I'm not going to go back and listen. But I didn't think of it as a great resource for others. I just thought that maybe only a select number were because I went to a few big ones. So, But maybe that's how they got around it instead of doing full-on video. They already have to do the mic system, so why not run it into a recorder and then grab the sound? Yeah, I don't know. But it would be good for them to let us know about it. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's like I was at the airport, and all of a sudden I, I see a tweet from Steve saying, "Hey, Cece, the Anthony Bourdain session's being live streamed." Of course, I bet I I was uh, I got to the airport real early, but I wasn't looking at Twitter for a while. I know shock and horror, so I missed it. And I was like, I would have sat right down in the airport and watched that if had had I known. And, yeah. Yeah. Okay, guys. Well, this was a great show. You know what? Let's just go through um, starting with Cece and just tell people where they can find you online. Uh, you can find me at cc-chapman.com or on Twitter at cc underscore Chapman. Jeff Cutler. Hi, this is Jeff Cutler from jeffcutler.com. You can find me at jeffcutler.com and on Twitter at Jeff Cutler. Jeffrey Powers. I was going to get my iPhone to do the flashlight thing. <laughs> <laughs> Jeffrey Powers with Geekazine over at geekazine.com. Think Magazine, take out mag, put in a geek. You got geekazine.com. Of course, my Twitter handle is geekazine. And uh, all my shows, of course, the Day in Tech History is the only one that's separate, and that's over at dayintechhistory.com. Geek out. <laughs> nice. So I'm Steve Garfield from stevegarfield.com, and I'm Steve Garfield on Twitter. I'd love to get feedback from you, what kind of shows, what you think of these shows, and what you'd like to see in the future, because I'm all about experimenting with the future of broadcast and interacting in real time. So thanks, guys, for joining us. We'll see you next time. Thanks. <laughs> nice. That'll be a good screenshot. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, now are we going to go for two minutes and record these two minutes or what <laughs> <laughs> we can um
I just I don't know how well managed this whole thing is. And a lot of people I talked to said it's become too corporate, but a lot of people have said it's always been corporate. As TC was saying, you're right, we've all been to conferences where people are pimping their product because they're there to represent their own company. And I think the theory behind South by was that it was an organic learning thing, like a TED conference. But <laughs> I don't know if it uh, still maintains that or not. I didn't, it, I didn't bring a book. Part of it is volunteers, so I'm guessing that there's a, uh, there's a turnover rate of some sort uh, every single year. So yeah. you know, next year we could have like 25% uh, uh, changeover from, uh, from people, so, and it's, it's all on how they work. That might also be the foot, foot soldiers, though, because I've done the liaison thing for a little while, and I've done some other stuff with them, and it's the same crew doing uh, press credentials, the same crew doing the liaison group. So in management or running the thing, it's pretty much the same group. I don't know how much, how much leverage or how much um, power they have or interest in changing the thing. Well, because don't forget. Well, don't forget too. I mean, they, I mean, they have a core team I know that works on it, just from having met met them a couple times. But I mean, there's twenty five thousand people coming to a conference. To say that it's not corporate is yeah. yeah you know, it's it's that's I can't I can't even fathom planning an event for twenty five people. I can't even <laughs> twenty five. I don't. And the, the multiple nobody. I thought it was interesting that no one talked about the multiple locations this year being oh. that. Because I mean, I know we all hated it and the shuttles were overcrowded, but I thought I thought it worked better better than I imagined. But I did I have. It, oh, I was going to say I did. Know. I did have. Um, CC. I did have some more that I didn't say. Which one? One was far away sessions. So, and the yeah, other one. That's was, a tough. That was tough. The other one I hated was the rain. Yeah, but <laughs> I know they had nothing. I, I blame they you, South by for the rain. <laughs> and, and the other thing I don't like about South by is there's no Dunkin' Donuts. I mean, I really would. I think if they were smart, they would do a pop-up store. Pop-up right? store in the bat. Pop-up store in the badge line. Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah. Would make fortune. Selling so don donuts and coffee, walking the badge line. Million would you, dollar would you idea. get? Would you get Dunkin' Donuts or Krispy Kremes? It's not Dunkin the donuts. donuts. It's the Dunkin' Donuts. Okay. <laughs> you wouldn't be on the phone with three New Englanders. It's Dunkin'. <laughs> um, the far away, like the spread out locations, did deter me from going to a few sessions because I knew I couldn't get back in time. Right. It deterred um, me from but, going to all of them. I, yeah. I crossed them all off my list. Yeah, well, I mean, and different events. I didn't make it over to the Tweet House because it was down at the bike shop, which was all the way across town. And I'm like, Looks like a great session, but yeah, there's no way I can is. get yeah. back. Yeah. Um, and I love the bike shop. I just didn't have the freedom. I was surprised, though, logistically, that they had a bunch of stuff at the Omni, the Intercontinental, and the Driscoll, which I didn't realize how close those were to one another. They're, like, touching each other. So yeah. if, you, if you were like, oh, I'm not going to the Omni, that's kind of silly because it is right there. And Intercontinental is right next door, too. So... I, once I found out where they really were on the map and had a session to go there, I'm like, oh, these I can go to. So I, I made my way between the Hilton, the convention center, and those three spots. But I didn't go to anything o over by the river, across the river, or down um, West, Six, uh, West Sixth Avenue. But they or did have the Chevy Street. cars there, so you could actually uh, catch rides. I thought yeah. that was a great I, I tweeted advantage. at the Chevy cars all day long the day I was leaving to get a ride to the airport. But unless you used at Chevrolet and tweet a Chevy as the hashtag in your tweets, they weren't looking for the word Chevy. They weren't looking for anything other than that full-on use of everything, which they tweeted back to me. They said, oh, that's what we used. But I saw that tweet when I was at the Salt Lake at the airport um, after paying X amount <laughs> for a cab. But I never rode a Chevy the whole time I was there. Because mm. I tweeted at Chevy and never got a oh. response. I'm like, okay. Actually, I can invite a couple people who want to come on. Let me do that. Do we know these people? Yeah, I know them. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to invite that James Britton. Let's see how you do this. 
invite. And then um, Justin Hastings. Oh, this would be good. Uh, the after show, you could just invite, invite um, people who watch, you right? Went you went Transformer again, Steve. Yeah, you're um. all crackly. You've been crackly pretty much ever since you brought that visual up. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah, you've got something interfering with the mic. I don't know. Is it the new headphones? I don't know. Let's see. Okay. Hello? Nope. No. It's I don't think it's I don't think it's the headphones. I think it I just think uh if he was to change his settings or restart he'd, he'd be fine, so yeah. I wouldn't worry too much about it. It was probably bringing in the screen share part of it. Yeah. Probably bumped everything crazy. Hey, there's a chat room. Who's in the chat room? Oh, who is in okay. the chat room? Was and mm. is that the dog? What? Oh, the oil guy. Yeah, is Roxy, oh, Roxy a dog? Yeah, that was from. Yeah, yeah, that was from earlier. I, I muted my mic because it was really loud here. I heard the dog barking, and I was like, Steve doesn't have a dog. Yeah. So. Wow, they just put a new slider on Google Plus. Did you see that? No. Up no. on the page. Up on the page, there's a slider right next to where it says Friends. Uh, Oh, oh, I'm 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 on Friends instead of full stream. There we go. Never mind. <laughs> well, if you go to if you go to Friends on the right side, you'll see this little slider, and it says uh, it tells you to show nothing or show fewer things or most things or everything. I've never seen that before. Wow! Look down the left hand side on Google. I have all the news. Oh wait, that's Yahoo. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. All right, guys. I gotta run. <laughs> All right. See you, CC. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta for, do a hey, podcast. Steve, good job hosting it. All yeah, right, this thanks. Is perfect. Except for, I gotta listen to the mic now and see what you guys are talking about. Yeah, yeah. it's it's something. It may either it's it, it, like when you talk, you can hear all of a sudden there's like interference in the background, and then every so often you'd go totally transformer voice. All of a sudden, it would just yeah. um, flip out. Maybe it's because I just got a phone call. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> That's not me. I'm not calling him. See. No, oh, I'm not doing it. I'm going to bounce out, too. i got to do a podcast. I'll see you guys later. All right. All right. See you guys. See you guys. Steve, I'm going to jump, too.